Kuzu Zambola. Welcome to Bhutan e-learning project. I'm Tilian Namgyal and this is a physics lesson for key stage 4 for classes 9 and 10. In this lesson we will try to understand the working of DC motor and AC generator. As you can see in front of me are the regular household appliances that we come across every day. Here we have a washing machine, a table fan, hair dryer, and a blender. Amongst all these electrical appliances, there is a common aspect, and that common aspect is a moving part that actually rotates upon the supply of electrical energy. Now, do you know the name of the device that is used in the moving part? It is called an electric motor. Electric motors are essentially a generator run backwards. That means an electric current is used to produce motion rather than a motion to produce electrical energy. In fact, a modern electrical motor was discovered accidentally by a Belgian electrical engineer, Zenob Graham, when he accidentally connected one DC motor to another DC motor in the year 1873. Generally, motors can be classified into two types. First, DC motor, and secondly, AC motor. Now first, we are going to discuss about DC motor. Quite simply, we can define DC motor as a device used to convert electrical energy to a mechanical energy. Before we start learning about the working of DC motor, you need to understand the concept of Lorentz force and Fleming's left-hand rule. Now, according to Lorentz force, a moving particle placed in a uniform magnetic field will experience a force. Similarly, a current-carrying conductor placed in a uniform magnetic field will experience a force that is perpendicular to the magnetic, for magnetic field and the current. If you can imagine my left hand as a current carrying conductor and the right hand as the magnetic field which is perpendicular to this uh, current carrying conductor. Now this current carrying conductor will experience a force which is actually known as a Lorentz force. According to Fleming's left hand rule, when the thumb, the first finger and second finger are stretched mutually perpendicular to each other and if first finger indicates the direction of the magnetic field and second finger indicates the direction of the current then the thumb would indicate the direction of the motion to start learning about the mechanism of dc motor um, let's start with the, the simplest dc motor possible and as you can see here it looks like this and uh, i want to start with the basic construction and it's uh, it contains current carrying amateur coil which is, as you can see, connected to the supply of current through commutator system, which is also known as split rings and carbon brushes. The armature coil is uh, placed between north and south pole of a magnet. Now, magnet can be permanent or either electromagnet. Now, if we supply a DC through split ring, current will start to flow through the armature coil. Here the DC source is from the cell. Now I want to draw your attention to the cell and the, and the connection with the, the commutator system. The positive end of the battery is connected to the left side of the split ring and negative end is connected to the right conductor of the split ring. Now as we see, south pole of magnet is placed near left side and north pole is placed near right side of the armature coil. Now this is very important. I want you to take note of this. Current on left hand side flows inward and current on the right hand side flows outward. And as you can see, current carrying conductor are placed in the magnetic field and it is indicated by the gray shade here in the model. Both conductors experiences a mechanical force. Now, the direction of the mechanical force can be determined by applying Fleming's left-hand rule. 
Now spread out your left hand, left, left thumb, forefinger and second finger so that they are all at 90 degrees to one another. With that, if forefinger is aligned along the direction of magnetic field from north pole to south pole, which means from right to left, and second finger is aligned to the direction of the current along left side of the conductor, then thumb indicates the direction of mechanical force indicated by the upward red arrow here. Now similarly, if the forefinger is aligned along the direction of the magnetic field from north pole to south pole and the second finger is aligned to the direction of current in the right side of the conductor, then thumb indicates direction of mechanical force indicated by the red downward arrow. Now due to this upward and downward force on the turn, one torque is produced which tends to rotate in the clockwise direction as shown here. After clockwise rotation of 90 degrees, the turn comes to a vertical position in respect to the magnetic field. Now at this position, there is no current in the conductors of the turn as the conductor and brush rest in between the two commutator segments. Now therefore, there is no force acting on the conductor. But due to the moment of inertia, the turn continues to rotate and comes to horizontal position again. But this position of the conductors has been interchanged here. That means the conductor which was previously at the left position comes to right position and which was previously at right position comes to left position. Now at this position, again, the mechanical force acts in the conductor whose direction can be again determined by Fleming's left hand rule. If the forefinger is aligned to the direction of magnetic field from north pole to the south pole and second finger is aligned to the direction of current along left side of the conductor, then thumb indicates the direction of mechanical force indicated by upward arrow here. And similarly, if the forefinger is aligned along direction of magnetic field from north pole to the south pole and second finger is aligned to the direction of current in the right side of the conductor, then thumb indicates direction of the mechanical force indicated by the downward force. Now, due to these upward and downward forces on the turn, one torque is produced again, which tends to rotate in the clockwise direction as shown. Now from this explanation, we can conclude that in this particular model, whichever conductor comes towards south pole experiences an upward mechanical force and whichever conductor comes under north pole experiences a downward mechanical force. And due to these two forces, the single turn, which is also known as amateur coil, continues to rotate until the DC source is disconnected. Now, a practical motors rotate with this principle. Practically, in place of single turn, there will be multi-turn amateur coil. Now that you have understood the working principle of DC motor, to understand the working mechanism of AC generator is not difficult. I want you to imagine how power stations in various parts of the country produce electricity. Now certainly there is no huge batteries that can provide electricity uh, to the whole nation. So from where the electricity comes from? Now, there is something, there is a device called a turbine which looks like a fan basically. Different forces External forces are used to rotate the turbine. Uh, the external energies or the forces such as uh, wind energy, even steam energy and water like that in our country uh, to rotate the turbine. Now you must be also wondering when the turbine rotates, how electricity is produced. Now it is based on the concept of electromagnetic induction, a method discovered by Michael Faraday in 1831. 
the core underlying principle of motor and generator is electromagnetic induction. Now, what is electromagnetic induction? Quite simply, electromagnetic induction is a production of current due to change in magnetic field. When there is a disturbance in magnetic field, it produces, it gives or it induces an electric current. So an AC generator functions based on this principle. And by this time, you might have noticed that it is opposite to motor, which means mechanical motion is used to produce an electric current. Similar to electric motor or DC motor, AC generator consists of four uh, main parts. Uh, armature coil, uh, magnet, a ring slip or slip rings, and brushes. Now let's take this elementary model to picturize the mechanism of AC generator. I want to draw your attention to the armature coil placed in between two magnets of opposite poles. Imagine that the armature coil is attached to a turbine so that when turbine rotates, armature coil rotates with it. When armature coil rotates, the magnetic field changes. Do you know why? Because of the disturbance due to rotation. And that results in the production of electric current. Now if you think when the electric current is produced, now we need to determine the direction of the electric current. Now how do we determine the direction of electric flow or the electric current? And for that we use Fleming's right hand rule. Remember in DC motor we used Fleming's left hand rule but here we will use Fleming's right hand rule. We have to stretch thumb, forefinger and second finger to right angle to each other such that uh, forefinger indicates the direction of magnetic field, thumb shows the direction of motion of the conductor, then the second finger will indicate the direction of the induced current. So now let's find out the direction of current on the left side of the armature coil. Before I show, why don't you try it yourself? Did you get that right? We need to position our right hand like this so that the forefinger is aligned to the direction of magnetic field and thumb shows the direction of motion of the conductor upward. Then the second finger indicates the direction of the induced current. Current flows inward. Similarly, let's find the direction of the current on the right hand side of the armature coil. We need to position our hand like this. As you can see, uh, the forefinger is aligned to the direction of the magnetic field and the thumb shows the direction of motion of the conductor indicated by the downward arrow. Then the second finger indicates the direction of the induced current. Current flows outward. Now I am taking off the hands and let's put arrows to indicate the direction of the current here. Now I want you to know that as armature coil completes half of its rotation, armature arm interchange their position. Direction of the induced current reverses. This process result in continuous change in the direction of current in external circuit, indicated by the different glow color of the bulb and arrow. Now this is the reason why AC generator produces an alternating current. You might be thinking how we connect armature coil with an external device. Now I want uh, to show that if we make direct connection as shown here, then what would happen? Then wires would get entangled as armature coil rotates. This is the reason why we use slip rings and brushes. So basically this is how we connect induced current to external devices. Now that we have learned and understood the working principle of DC motor and AC generator, I want you to check your understanding by answering two questions. First, try to write at least one difference between DC motor and AC generator. Second question, 
in your own words, I want you to describe the working principle of DC motor and AC generator. I am very much hopeful that you have understood the lesson. In conclusion, I want to close the lesson by summarizing what we have learned so far. I want you to remember that uh, DC motor is a device used to convert electrical energy to mechanical energy. An AC generator is a device that you use to convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. Basically, both device, both the devices have same component. Armature coil, magnets, carbon brushes, and split ring in terms of DC motor and slip ring in terms of AC generator. Thank you very much for attending the lesson and I will see you in my next lesson. Thank you very much.